Now friends, I'm making this video because of a mistake that I made and I think you should not do the same. So the other day some gentleman arrived at my workplace and offered to sell me a fiber SIM card and for some reason it was just a coincidence that I just ran out of bundles in my Safaricom line. So I normally use Safaricom for internet browsing out there in here in the house. I mostly use some Wi-Fi that is, you know, um, provided by someone here. But out there, I do use Safaricom, sometimes Airtel, but of late I've been using Safaricom most because they have stable internet. And so I decided to give it a try, Fiber, Fiber 4G from Jamie Telecommunications. You guys know that Fiber cartoon thing, yeah, that network. So apparently, I didn't do a lot of research. The guy went ahead and registered me, including taking a lot of personal information, my photograph, my ID, and so on. So much information, if you ask me. Now, he did everything on his phone. There's like a fiber app that they use to register you. And then I decided that, you know what, this is a good deal. I normally use a thousand bob per month on Safaricom. That gives me 15 GB. But this fiber were offering a whole 30 GB. That's like double the Safaricom. And the guy said, the network is so nice in my town, very stable for G. He decided that, you know, I have a phone with a dual SIM. I rarely use the Airtel line. Why not put in that fiber SIM card and enjoy cheap, nice, fast internet as it were. <laughs> so what happened is after all registration was done, the SIM card was activated and I'd already paid the 1000 bob via M-Pesa, purchased 30 GB of internet. <laughs> the SIM card was given to me and I placed it into my phone and lo and behold, no network. I thought that maybe it's like taking a while to pick up the signal or something. Nothing, not even a single bar was showing up. Tried to reboot, restart the phone, nothing. I tried to ask the guy, you know, what's up and he had no clue whatsoever. So he was like, the other alternative is to purchase this thing called a MiFi. You see that thing, it's basically just an internet dongle that everyone calls MiFi out here. So put the SIM card in there so that I walk around with that thing in one pocket and my phone on another pocket. You know, that's not the kind of life I want to carry around basically two phones. One phone as a hotspot for the other phone, one phone without a screen and the other phone with a screen and why carry around some other device, you know? In short, I decided that no, 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 this is not the way to go. This is what happened. I actually decided to do a little bit of research and this is what I should have done from the word go. Now, mobile networks are such that the radio waves that are picked up by your phone come in various frequencies, you know, the way old radios were tuned to get some FM, I don't know, 31.1 megahertz and so on. Anyway, network providers, Safaricom, Airtel, and what have you, are allocated by the regulator some frequency band with which to transmit their network. And you can always Google the 4G frequency spectrum. You can see that it ranges between 600 megahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. Within that range of frequencies, there are several bands, you know, that are allocated to these networks. You can see for Safaricom 4G LTE network information, the LTE band that Safaricom uses is band 3, which is 1800 megahertz with a channel width of 20 megahertz and band 20, which is 800 megahertz. So Safaricom does use those two bands for 4G. And if you head over here to Wikipedia, the frequency bands used by these other networks are given over here. Airtel does use band 20, that's 800 megahertz, same as Safaricom, which uses two bands. Telcom Kenya, same, band 20, 800 megahertz. But Fiber 4G, as you can see, uses band 28, which is 700 megahertz. Now, I read that this is good for rural areas and so on, but the problem is that most phones around don't support band 28, 700 megahertz. And that includes my phone. This phone that you know I featured in another video, it's called AGM not N1. And so that's the reason why I could not get the fiber SIM card to work over here after spending my 1000 shillings. I wish I googled earlier, but still even these guys who are employed by fiber to market their SIM cards and so on, they should have some basic knowledge of this kind of stuff. They should even ask you beforehand to check whether this SIM card will actually work in your phone, even physically, if you can't Google 
whatever bands your phone supports. And so in short, to find out if your phone will support the Fiber 4G network, you can always just Google the specs of your phone or just write your phone's name. An example is my wife's phone is OnePlus 10 Pro. And here we are, it's taken us to gsmarena.com and you can see here for the network, the international version is here, the USA version is here. You can see that it supports all these many bands, including band 28, the fiber 4G band. So yeah, maybe she can take it. <laughs> That's it for this video, guys. Make sure that before you buy a fiber 4G SIM card, check that your phone actually does support band 28. 700 megahertz. See you in the next video and as always, no pressure.